Hi, and welcome back to the third instalment of Bat Forces. This time we're looking at push and push back. Remember when I talked to you about you leaning against a wall? Well, actually, the wall is actually leaning against you too, believe it or not. We might actually see it lean, but it's pushing back. And because neither of you are moving, we must be in a situation where we have a balanced force. So this is very interesting in the whole process of it. And this is a nice little way of us trying to explain how things move or why things move a bit later. And we'll give some examples on the way through, but we are essentially looking at Newton's third law of motion. Right, what we've said so far, let's review and recap. Forces always act in pairs. There's normally at least two, but there can be more. And so I'm just simplifying it down to what we need to know. Now, forces tend to work against each other, and if no movement occurs, we've got balanced or equal forces. So let's consider the case of, of this girl sitting in a wheelchair. Now, in this case, we've got lots of different things going on, but we have it at essentially zero motion. So we're talking about balanced forces. So she is pushing down with her weight. Now we know her weight will be equal to her mass times acceleration due to gravity. So this means that the chair she's sitting in is also pushing up with the same force. Now the same applies to us when we're sitting in a chair. If we are sitting there and we're pushing down with our mass and gravity's dragging on us, so our total our force, remember weight is a force. So if we're forcing down with that, then the chair must be pushing back with that amount of force too, because we're not moving. We're just sitting there on our chair. Now if we go to the next stage, we can see that this laptop that's sitting on her knee, it is pushing down with its mass times the effect of gravity, but her, the armrest, it looks to be looking at the armrest or her lap, is pushing up. Again, we've got the balance forces of the mass of the computer times g. So we can work these things out. So if, as long as we know her mass, we know g is a constant. Remember that, g is a constant, which means it does not change on Earth. Now, before people yell at me about this one, we're talking about an introductory course here. So we are looking at the fact that the G, we're assuming, is a constant value. All right, we might have other changes. There are situations where we can change G. For example, if we go to another planet, or if we are falling at a certain rate and things are pushing against us, there are certain situations where we can change it. But for our point of view, in this introduction course, we are looking at the fact that G is a constant, which means it doesn't change. Now, you'll always be given this. Any decent paper will give you this, and normally it is put as 9.8, the value of 9.8. Sometimes, though, we just take it, round it up to 10 to make things easier on our mathematics. All right, so we see in this case, we've got these things. So we've got push and push back. The girl is pushing down on the chair. The chair is pushing back up. The laptop is pushing down on her, her she is pushing back up. Now because there is no movement on either of those situations, she's not moving in relation to the chair and the laptop is not moving in relation to her, then we can say those forces are balanced, so we've got equal and opposite forces. Notice they're going in the opposite directions and we should show that. Remember the force diagrams with the arrows? We're just showing the arrows this time. All right, so look at what happens on this case. Now, rockets and thrust. Thrust is the force coming down. So that's thrust. And a good scientist or an engineer will be able to tell you the size of that. It's a force and it's in newtons. 
we know that the force holding this rocket down will be equal to its weight, or mass times gravity. But we also know the rockets move that way, so we have different forces acting on it. To start off with, when we have the light up the engine, the thrust value is less than the weight. But we know, right, so initially, force of weight. But we do know after that, that the thrust is greater than the force of weight and the rocket starts to move upwards. So when that happens, the rocket rises because our force pushing down is bigger than our force coming up. But we've got to remember down here is the Earth. So when the rocket pushes down, the Earth pushes back. Same rules apply. So in this case, if it is normal and it's not moving, then we could say that the thrust, the size of the thrust is there. But once we start it moving, it simply means that we've got these things going. And then of course, we have to apply these other things. Remember F equals MA, Newton's second law? That comes into play in this sort of situation. But all we can see is the rocket pushes down, the Earth effectively is pushing back, and finally, once the thrust is greater, we get movement. This push down forces the motion this way. This is the motion direction. So thrust and motion work against each other. Alright, the same is true for when we are moving. We want to move this way, so our feet push back this way. Alright? When we're running, it, it can be equal. Now, sometimes, of course, when we are moving, we have a net resultant force, which means that the force forward is greater than the force pushing back, or the force pushing back must be great enough to make us be able to move forward. And don't forget that everything acts in the opposite direction. So if we want to move forward, we push back. All right, so whenever you want to do something, you have to push the opposite direction, the direction you want to go. And it becomes very interesting. Now certain sports like skiing and water skiing, goodness knows what, we have lots of different things applying and you might notice there might be something different going on in terms of push. There is still push and push back. Newton's third law still applies, right? but the frictional force is a bit less and they sort of have a bit of a play on this as well. So I hope that made a little bit of sense and what I'd like you to take away from this is the fact that if we want to go forward, we push back and this applies to anything we do, any sort of movement we do, the forces are opposite in directions. All right, but if we push with two, two newtons one way, then the effect is of two newtons pushing the other way. Okay, so the size and the force, direction of force must be shown.